they were exhausted. Absolutely exhausted. Day after day, making bricks after Pharaoh had brought the hammer down and no more hay in the bricks and you gotta make as many bricks and the people are dying thirst and exhaustion and how long will this go on and they're they're crying out the Lord hears their cry and he anoints Moses to come and set them free free from the the confinement and oppression of Pharaoh in Egypt and so plagues were brought down on Pharaoh as he refused to let him free and the last plague finally he relented he said go go I'm sick of this I can't do this anymore go and the people are so excited and they say all right let's go pack your stuff we're out of here hundreds of thousands of them and they go over they're headed towards the promised land finally free but are they they come to the red sea and how how are we going to get across this and the lord gives moses the move he says raise your hands and the seas will part and i will make it happen and you will cross on dry ground And they crossed on dry ground. But Pharaoh had changed his mind. He goes, no, I'm not. No, they're not doing this. We're going to go get them and we're going to kill them. We're going to wreck them. And so now the people are looking back at, oh, Lord, what's going on? And then the last Israelite is across the Red Sea. And the waters come in and destroy the Egyptian army. And what do they do when they get to the other shore? They turn around and they realize something. We're free. We're liberated. It's happened after hundreds of years. We are free. We are free. Imagine the greatest relief and freedom you've ever experienced in your life and multiply it probably times 100. So what did they do when they were free? Well, they celebrated. They made music. They sang songs. They played tambourines. And then Moses and Miriam wrote this song. I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he's hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. He's my father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he's hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. In the, greatest, in the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger and it consumed them like stubble by the blast of your nostrils. The waters piled up. The surging water stood up like a wall and the deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea and the enemy boasted, I will pursue, I'll overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. You stretch out your right hand and the earth swallows your enemies. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, You will guide them to your holy dwelling. And now the holy dwelling for us is here. We are the temple. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall on them. By the power of your arm... They will be still as a stone until your people pass by, Lord. Until the people you bought pass by. 
You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place, Lord, you made for your dwelling, the sanctuary, Lord, your hands established. The Lord reigns forever and ever. This is considered to be the oldest song ever written down in human history. The oldest song. Isn't that something? And what about us? Songs. We were, we were singing songs just a moment ago, and I was so moved. Why are we moved? What's that about? How is it that songs and music work? I think it's safe to say, probably safe to say, that everyone in this room has a song or songs that really speak to you. Either the lyrics combined with the melody move you, or, or the, the tone and the melody itself transport you back to another place in time or an event or an experience and it just overwhelms you. All the senses come flooding back. It's an amazing thing. And much of this music has what experts call a hook. What does that mean, a hook? It means that there's a way that the lyrics flow and the way that the melody flows and the way that the chorus works that somehow it's so appealing it just gets right in you. How many of you got a song, at least one song like that, that it just gets you? And if you don't have one yet, we hope that as you continue to worship here, you'll get one. And songs work another way too, by the way, I gotta tell you. Sometimes they can work against us. I can't help it, this happened to me. About a year ago, I had all this pain in this side of my body down my leg and I was going into the outpatient Surgery center to get those shots, needles that seemed like this long, but I'm sure they weren't, about like that. I got five of them over several weeks. And the last one, I'm in there, I got three nurses and a doctor, right? And I can see what's going on. I said, can you put it on a screen? I'm gonna watch it. It's kind of, that's how I am. So anyway, they hit a nerve. You ever have a nerve inside of you be hit by a needle? It's like a bomb goes off inside of you. And I screamed, and then I started laughing hysterically because that's what I do when I'm in extreme pain. I don't know what else to do. I just laughed hysterically. And then it was over. And I thought, wow. And they said, that really hurt, huh? I said, yeah. And then I started singing a song. I started singing a song, and I did it on purpose. I knew it was a song they wouldn't forget. It goes like this. And I'm sorry for what it may do to some of you here tonight. It's a small world after all. And two of the nurses and the doctor said, no. And I said, you hurt me, I hurt you. <laughs> I have a song. I have a song that's very, very personal to me. I actually learned it in a choir I was in over 21 years ago and I was going through a really hard time. And somehow the, the refrain, I don't know what it is, the chorus, the lyrics, just got me and I've, I've had it part of me ever since. I shared it once before in a sermon here, but I've used it when I'm going through something that's really, really tough, something that's really difficult physically or mentally, emotionally or spiritually, but I also sing the song when something really wonderful has happened. And I rejoice, and it's like this. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. I can't tell you how many times a week I sing that song. Well, why would I do that? What makes a song my song? What makes a song your song? Because God built us for music. He designed us for music. Do you, do, do you know the very first sensation you develop in the womb is hearing? The very first sensation in the womb is hearing. That's no accident. It's by design. And music develops this capacity, this ability within us to, to appreciate and create poetry and to give us excitement and, and to help us express sadness and, and passion or anything else we can think of. I, I just think it's one of God's most delightful creations, music and lyrics. And it brings me back to these Israelites on the shore. So they could have got on the shore and went, wahoo, 
kind of anticlimactic. Or today, the phrase is, let's go. But you know what? I don't think they gathered around and plotted and planned it. What are we going to do? I, I really want to express something to you. Yeah, I, I'm elated. Are you elated? Yeah. What can we think of? It wasn't like that. It just came out. It just came out singing and dancing and making music. And we have that today. We have that today in our life today. So I want to look at this song that I read to you and just select some of the lyrics and see how they apply to us today and what they can mean to us today. In Exodus 15, 1-1, it says, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Catch that? It, we, it just could be a throwaway line. We just run right past, but I will sing to the Lord. It could have said, I'll notice that he's exalted. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. That's a beautiful expression. And the Lord is my strength and my defense in verses two and three. What's so important about that? I need strength. I need strength. And I need a defense. At times, I run out of strength. I just don't have enough. I'm, I'm pouring it all out day after day like many of you, maybe all of you. Maybe you've done today or another day. I need more than I have, Lord. And then there's things coming at me, and I, I don't know if I can dodge them all or deflect them all. I need a defense. You are my strength and my defense. And then in another verse, in your unfailing love, you will lead the people you've redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. Unfailing love. What's so important about that? I like the word unfailing because I look at how I love and, and hope that I love and have loved. At times, my love runs out of gas. At times, I don't know how to love. At times, I don't love well. I need something greater than myself. I need an unfailing love. And because of that love, he will lead us. He's redeemed us. He will lead us from his love. And then he, in his strength, he guides them and guides us to the holy dwelling. This is it. Then there was a tabernacle, then a temple. Here, we are the temple. Christ is in us and we are in him. He dwells within that's our holy dwelling. And then in verse 18, the Lord reigns forever and ever. That is so reassuring to me. Look around. Everything around us ends. Everything ends except him. And when we're in him, how reassuring, how comforting it is to know that it doesn't end. That it's only when we do leave this life, we just change the addresses. We don't go away. He reigns forever and ever. And reigns means what? He's the boss. Not Satan, not demons, not anybody else. And then lastly, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. He's a warrior. I need a warrior. I need a warrior who's never without strength, who's never too, far, too tired to fight for me, who never tires of taking care of us and defending us. I need that warrior, and we have that warrior. So there's three important things I want to emphasize here from this song, in addition to what we've shared here. God tells us that our walk with him should be filled with gratitude. And if we look closely enough in our life in any given moment, you look closely enough with the right filter, you will find plenty to be grateful for. It's always there. And with him and with patience, we can find all those things to be grateful for as we walk with him. And then God shields us from our enemies when we take refuge in him. I love the word refuge. I think of a fort. When I was a kid, I built a lot of forts. And when I went in a fort, you can't come in because I'm safe in here. In him... With him protecting me, I'm safe. He is my refuge. And he will shield us from the enemies. They can't come in because he is there. And lastly, God reveals that he will guide those who have faith in him. 
Faith, assurance of things hoped for, conviction of things not yet seen. Faith is so important. By faith, Abraham was righteous. By faith. If we could have it all right in our hands, faith wouldn't be required. Faith is critical. It's through our faith in him, he will guide us. So tonight we think of our victories. I want you to think of your victories tonight as these people were singing this song to celebrate their victory. We think of them as a body because all those who've received Christ as their savior, we are unified in that. It's our victory. But then individual victories. Think of your individual victories. If we pause and think back in our life, most of us will recall many things that when we were in the middle of it, we weren't sure what the way out of it would be. We weren't sure there would be a victory. And yet here we are, and there have been victory after victory in our life. We need to think of those things. And we sing. We sing. We sing praises to the Lord. Isn't that something? We just think of how powerful and beautiful and wonderful it is. Well, it's ancient, and we were built for it. So revel in it. We're here tonight together. We're going to sing some more together. And I encourage you, when we sing some more songs tonight, I'm just asking, would you just surrender to the song? Surrender to the music? Just, just let it go and just sing. Sing and celebrate this incredible gift as they did on the shores of the Red Sea. Pray with me. Lord God, I think of <laughs> victory back then and victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Lord, we don't have to wonder anymore. How's it all going to turn out? How's it going to go? It's done. And that is the ultimate victory, the victory over death. And as we enter into a time of communion tonight, we will celebrate victory and we will ask for your help with victories yet to be won in our lives together, in our lives individually. We thank you, Father, for what you've already done, and we thank you even more for what's to come as you walk with us, mm. bless us, guide us, and direct us. We pray this in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> Victory song. Victory song. Well, if you were here three Sundays ago, you witnessed a victory celebration right here on our platform. Not in song, but in sacrament. As those who had placed their faith in Jesus following his command to be baptized as public declaration for their faith. And now this sacrament or sacred moment is one of two sacraments that we adhere to here at Shoreline. And it's customary at night of worship that we would celebrate that other sacred moment, communion. And uh, this also is a victory celebration. And in fact, it inspired a victory song of its own. In 1939, E.M. Bartlett, he wrote the very last song that he would produce as a songwriter. And by the 1960s, it had found its way into hymn books throughout the land and became popular and very, uh, very well used. The song was victory in Jesus. Now, I won't sing it as Pastor Dennis was brave enough to sing his song, but let me read these words to you. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. So this victory celebration in which we participate in is symbolic celebration of Christ's victory over sin and death and his embrace of us as dearly loved family members. Uh, this act is a symbol of the beauty, the hope, and new life emanating from the core of the gospel, that that Paul expounded on in, in that 15th chapter of the first letter to the Corinthian church. He said, what I learned, I'm passing on to you as of first importance. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. He was buried, raised on the third day, according to scripture. 
and then went on to tell about Jesus appearing to those uh, who were at hand. This is an act, it's a symbol of the death to the power and the penalty of sin in our lives. And it's a symbol of Jesus' gift of new covenant in his blood. It's a celebration of the victorious death and resurrection of Jesus. Victorious, that could seem odd. Victory, it seems so painful and difficult, but it is because he conquered death itself and his resurrection confirmed the victory. He won and because he won, we win. And tonight, if you're a follower of Jesus and you've embraced him as savior and Lord, this is for you this sacrament tonight. So I want to remind those of you watching at home, get your elements ready. Bread, cracker, juice of some kind. We're going to take communion in a moment. So here in the worship center, what you're going to see is we have tables. You can see the candles. And we have elements there. The crackers are all gluten-free. Okay, in case you're concerned about it, we just want to reassure you. And the way we're going to do it is you go to the table... When you're ready, after I close this time in prayer, and then you take communion when you're ready. You might do it right there at the table. You might come back to your seat and just wait for the Lord to prompt you. You might come forward, come down in front here and take communion there. And as we come to the table tonight, Scripture also guides us to do a fearless search within, and if we find anything we're holding against a brother or a sister, we need to release it. Just last night, I was reminded of something I'd been holding against someone, and I just surrendered. I said, Lord, I am so sorry. I encourage you in that same way. You may want to do that down in front. And then when you do take communion, remember, we're celebrating our victories and ask the Lord humbly to minister to you if there's an area where you still need victory. As recorded in the book of Luke, he, Jesus, took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shortly, we'll invite you into victory celebration for this supreme act of love. And we'll be eating that bread together. You will. We stepped ahead. Dennis allowed. Oops. The juice symbolizes the blood of Jesus poured out for us willingly and celebrated for the victory provided through his death and resurrection. Thank you, brother. As I pray, feel free to go to the tables. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this sacred ritual that you, Jesus, directed us to do in your holy word. And we engage in this in reverence, respect, and awe for the new covenant offered to us by grace, unearned love, your love, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Speak into the hearts of every person here tonight as they receive the elements. What would you have them examine and look at and feel as they engage in communion, Father? Speak to us all. We pray this and thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Mm -hmm.